The Dial Valley of Fannin County in the North Georgia mountains, remote, pristine, situated on the Tacoa River, full of history. This house is known as the Cochran Davenport House. George Cochran built it in 1885. This is a unique 1880s era farmstead, one of the last in existence in Georgia that retains many of its original outbuildings. The land that the farmstead is built on dates back to the indigenous Cherokee people. Elma Etman is the current owner of this historic farmstead. George Cochran was the son-in-law of the original settler of Fannin County, who is Louis Van Zant. Van Zant purchased his land from different speculators who had won 1832 Georgia land lottery 160-acre grants. One parcel he acquired right after the land lottery was number 249 from William Downs, a Revolutionary War veteran living in Effingham County near Savannah. Van Zant moved his family from North Carolina to the land along the Tacoa River in 1834, traveling in a Conestoga wagon driven by six horses with his wife and two small children. They came in a wagon, apparently a part of the wagon is still in existence over at the Van Zandt house. On May 21st, 1879, 28-year-old George Cochran married Louis Van Zandt's 37-year-old daughter, Eliza. Three years later, on July 22nd, 1882, Eliza gave birth to twin boys, but Eliza and one of the twins died the next day from complications, leaving George with his newborn son, Louis Henry Cochran. In what was a common occurrence during this era, the widower, George Cochran, married Eliza's 46-year-old sister, Letty Van Zant, six months after Eliza's death. Letty would raise her nephew, Louis, as her own. By 1880, the Van Zant family had acquired almost 2,000 acres of land in the Dial Valley, including a 160-acre parcel, number 248, which he had purchased for $500 in 1853 from Samuel Watts of Floyd County, Georgia. In 1885, Cochran would build a modern Victorian-era home for his family on this land. It was George Cochran who built the house. He was a man ahead of his times. So the house is very unusual for this region. Following Cochran's second wife, Letty's death in 1910, the Cochran family would live in the home until just before 1920. William Prescott Davenport, Cochran's nephew, known as Press, then acquired the home. Press had married Lizzie Van Zant, the granddaughter of Louis Van Zant, in 1907. A natural-born salesman and entrepreneur, Press had built a general store across the road from his uncle's home in 1908, along with a small home next to the store. He had built a store at the bridge crossing. There is a bridge, the Dow Bridge, just beyond the house. The store stood on one side of the bridge. The Davenports would raise their four children in the beautiful Victorian home overlooking the Tacoa River. The family would live continuously in the home for almost 60 years, with Press running his store across the road until his death in 1956. Lizzie would remain until her death in 1969. Lizzie and Press's son, Manley Davenport, was the last family member to occupy the house until his death in 1980. Most all are buried in the Van Zant Cemetery, which is located to the north of the Cochran Davenport House, on the large hill that looks peacefully across this section of the Dial Valley and the Tacoa River. In 1985, a young family from Jasper, Georgia, acquired the home from the Davenport Estate. And then in 1987, the home was purchased by Elma Etman. My dream was to restore the house and put the property on the National Register of Historic Places because it had so much significance to the community. By then, 
the 100-year-old home desperately needed renovation. Edmund contracted with Atlanta architect Milan Ventura, who was experienced with historic preservation. And we started working on the project for fixing the house because it was in inhabitable <laughs> condition, okay. We decided to put a real foundation and make things a little more stable and straighten the house at the same time a little bit. Restoration was underway in the summer of 1987. The doors and mantles were removed, chimneys taken apart, and work was underway to jack the house up to build a new foundation. On August 23rd, 1987, at 11.30 at night, I was using my phone in the house across the river talking to the contractor who was doing the work for me when I heard a loud boom. I looked out of the window and I saw my dream house engulfed in flames. It was arson. Someone had walked through the home in the dark of night with a large container of gasoline. Then they struck a match. The house was burned to the ground. The flames were so large. In old buildings that are over 100 years old, the wood is very dry, it just goes whoosh. I vowed I was gonna build the house back. I stood on the road that night and vowed I was gonna build it back. Why, I don't know. It was shock, you know, but I knew that it's just another beginning. <laughs> they just, you know, that we would start again at a different point, you know, not at the point we wanted to start, but at the point which was sort of forced upon us. The century-old house was reduced to ash, but miraculously, the historic outbuildings survived the fire with just minor damage. Well, we couldn't do very much for five months because the state arson crew had to come in. They would not let us touch the ruins. In an amazing stroke of luck, Ventura had done detailed measurements of the entire house before the fire, creating a full set of blueprints. Part of the survey of the old house or the existing structure was photographing everything. So everything was photographed, everything was documented and detailed. The week before the fire, I received my insurance on the property. It was insurance on a historic property, so I had stick-for-stick stick replacement value insurance on a historic property. So we immediately went from restoration project into rebuilding project. In the two years following the fire, the home was lovingly rebuilt. The subsequent painstaking reconstruction produced the house that stands today. In 1990, the Georgia Trust for Historic Preservation recognized Elma Etman for outstanding achievement in the field of preservation for the Cochrane Davenport House of Dial Valley. The design of the home is considered to be a two over two modified dog trot, which means you enter to a large central hall, which has two rooms on either side. It's a, actually, it is a pretty typical southern house, which had hall through the center. They always had big, long halls through the center for the draft, for the air movement to keep the house habitable without air conditioning, and then two rooms on each side. You enter through a large central hall. In front is a gourmet kitchen and sunroom. The master bedroom and bath to the right. A family room and dining room are to the left. Upstairs, there's an open space loft directly above the first floor large central hall with two bedrooms on either side, along with two bathrooms. What they did here, they repeated the same layout upstairs with the bedrooms and then back to back between all of those two rooms, there were fireplaces. So the house really had eight fireplaces to start with. In addition, the home is very unique in that it has a separate parlor in the front. There appears to be two front doors, one for the house and one for the parlor. I believe this is the only house in this area, if not 
North Georgia, that has a separate parlor. That's where they birthed them and married them and laid them out. But what makes this property truly unique is all the vintage outbuildings. They represent a peek into the past to what a working farmstead more than 100 years ago might have looked like. There are six or seven outbuildings, which is very unusual to have them standing today. The Apple House is perched atop the root cellar to the northwest of the house. The root cellar below provided a constant cool temperature to store canned preserved items. Apples and other fruits and vegetables harvested in the fall were dried in the room above. A smokehouse is on the east side of the house, used for curing and preserving meats that were raised on the farm. A large corn crib was important to properly preserving the harvest, with details like deer antler door handle pulls. The farmers used to pull their wagons up under the eaves of that corn crib and toss the ears of corn into the slatted container of the corn crib. Then they would come into the house and have a party and dance. There are also a couple of small storage buildings next to the corn crib, one that serves as a home for the farmstead's current goat population, who have also been known to dance a few steps. No farmstead would be complete without its barn. This large working barn was built of rough-hewn lumber by Press Davenport almost 100 years ago. It's still being used to this day to house the cows. Across the road from the house sits the spring house. The actual spring originates under the country road and flows down through the spring house to the Tacoa River. The building has a room upstairs with a porch. Back in the day, this area was a crossroads, with travelers heading north and south between Morganton, Ellijay, and Dahlonega. It is thought that the room afforded a place for a traveler to stay. With the outbuildings and the restored Cochrane Davenport home, the property represents one of the only fully intact farmsteads found in Georgia today. This house represents for me, it's like a phoenix rising out of the flames. It's, it's kind of my heritage. The Cochrane Davenport Farmstead is one of the last of its kind, truly the jewel of the Dial Valley in the North Georgia Mountains. Have a story idea for this show? Visit us at historyben.org and let us know.